So you're out of jail. No, excuse me. You're out of prison, which is a different thing. It's a very, very different thing. Um, You're out of prison and now you're trying to reintegrate back into society. And, you know, we, we've been talking about this, um, particularly in Florida with, you know, what's going on surrounding, um, there's, you know, their civil rights, being able to vote, being able to, you know, really sort of have that portion of their life, you know, be settled, have those debts settled and to move on. Um, so you're facing trying to reintegrate your, your yourself, you know, into society. Um, you have these burgeoning, you know, tech skills. Mm-hmm. What what was the thing that, in hindsight, you wish that um, you you maybe had like more mentorship or uh, what people can do? Because I really want to challenge people to one one of the things that I, I I want people to get out of you know what you're saying in this conversation is to think a little bit differently about the people we send to prison. Right. And then the people that we let out, recognizing their humanity, recognizing that, you know what, maybe they just had a bad set of instructions. These aren't people that we that we threw away. So right. what in hindsight could have been more helpful um, from society, you know, the community, the city, you know, what, you know, what was that? Let me think. I mean, I was, I've been pretty lucky. I've been pretty lucky to have some awesome people. Like I had friends that visited throughout that entire time. I had friends that were there at the gate when I came out. Um, I've been really lucky, I guess. So I, my, my experience is one of privilege more than most in this. Mm. Circumstance. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of family. I mean, I do have some, but I didn't have a whole lot. I had my, the main thing that was my brother and my wife and, um, they set me up to succeed. But as far as society, one thing that was difficult was I felt like, and maybe it just was because it was early, but everything was difficult for me as far as like trying to fill out the FAFSA, understanding why I wasn't getting like maybe a student loan when I was trying to go to college. Why? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was just so convoluted. You know, I got denied three or four times for various reasons. Like for example, um, you have to prove residency. Well, mm. one thing about residency is if you were incarcerated, it doesn't count for being a resident of Florida. So, uh, I, you mm. know, I was like, you're telling me I'm going to have to pay like five times the amount? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Okay. That just, that just, I just snapped into like what you were saying. So you were applying to go to, to in-state school in Florida right. as a Florida resident, right? but you weren't technically considered a Florida resident because you hadn't you were right. in a in a place that doesn't count for residency. Right, exactly. Even though you are a ward, literally a ward of the state of Florida. Look, literally I'm the only one that couldn't leave Florida. Right. <laughs> right. How can I not be a resident? I'm the only one this state is making sure I can't go anywhere. We, when you say the only one, like your 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 class or status of, of, of person. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like so that was that was yeah. I didn't understand. I also was, uh, understand that I was a teenager when I went in. I didn't. I I grew up in there, so mm. I had no understanding of any of this anyway. So every single roadblock was frustrating. Every mm. single roadblock, and I can't even imagine if you didn't have the help I had. You know, I could call yeah. my brother. Like I mentioned, like I could call my brother and say. I can ask him anything. He's going to give me some good insight. You know, my wife was there to like, tell me what she, she had gone through law school. So she had like, you know, just finished law school and was taking the bar and she was in a situation where she could help me. Um, But what if you didn't have those people, you know, what if you didn't have have, like some form of education background and they didn't understand it? Um, They had never, they didn't have a situation like this. So either the people that came before me didn't press the issue or they didn't have people come before me. And I don't, I assume that people came before me. So I guess they just t- took the normal bill. Well, I wasn't doing that. So I started pr- pushing back and like complained and like, I just raised hell in every avenue that I could saying, this is crazy. Like I don't yeah. have, money. first off, I have no money. And my wife just graduated law school. So she's got 
crazy debt. Mm -hmm. Um, It hadn't even started working yet. So she was like going to take the bar. So we're, you know, we don't have anything at the time. And I'm asking around and long story short, I did get somebody that helped. And that was like, that meant everything. I got somebody that was like, they made the calls rather than, Hey, call this number. Cause usually it would be call this number. I call them. They don't know what you're talking about. So then I got to set another appointment. I go back in. They tell me, Oh, well, if they don't want to do that, then I can't help you unless this person does something. So then I leave, call that other person. They'd set another appointment. You know, it's those kinds of things. Before yeah. long, you've missed like the whole term. Um, but I hit somebody that cared and they took the time and they were like, okay, we're going to figure this out. And long story short, they found a way to add in with the residency, I hold new paperwork where basically like allowed me to, to, to claim residency without the normal stuff. Um, hmm. It didn't, it didn't exclude me from being a resident, being incarcerated. It was, it was a wild in- incident, but like that kind of thing has happened numerous times where, I'm like, damn, why does this keep happening? And give an example. Uh, my friend Harris that just got out the other day, he's at the he's at the bank. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I do remember. I do remember. Um, this had me so mad because I'm on the phone and I can hear this lady. The lady's harassing him and he doesn't know anything. He's been down 15, 14 years. He yeah. doesn't understand half of what he's done, even on Twitter, was like, he'll ask me, do I do this? What I do? You know, he doesn't understand a lot of it. So... I, I had him put me on speakerphone to try to help. And this lady's like telling him things like get a receipt. Luckily, somebody's there that knows better. He didn't know better. He's going to go yeah. home and collect receipts. So I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 wait a minute. Like, you don't have to show what you bought. You don't, this lady, you don't have to show this lady what you bought. You have to show that where that money came from, maybe. But mm-hmm. you don't have to show. So he shows her the receipts, the cash app receipt, the, basically that. These are people from Twitter. I don't know if they just, because it was kind of a country area. Yeah. I don't know if the lady just didn't believe it or whatever, but dude, it was like, she was kind of condescending, insinuating like he's, it's just, it was crazy. It was just absolutely crazy that he showed her the cash app, showed the amounts of money. And she wanted this dude to go get a receipt from home to show where he spent that money. Like it blew right. It blew my mind. But anyways, there's difficulty like that, and I don't know how to change it because I don't know if it's system. I don't know if it's just getting people to – I don't know. Maybe the one thing I could think of, and this is like I'm sure you get like – this is probably controversial. A lot of people (laughs) say, oh, you're catering catering to groups. But if there were a situation – if there was a situation where – not a situation, like a platform where people – could have things streamlined until they understand how the stuff operates and works. Like mm. advice, people that are immediately plugged in, because you get out and you start trying to operate and work normal, it's just difficult, you know, yeah. and you understand a lot of it. So if maybe there was a platform where like, okay, you want to go to college as a felon, here's what here, you know, and something catered specifically to ease it. Because like the whole thing comes down to this. I think if we eat, make good choices easier, and bad choices harder. And I'm, I realize how simple that sounds. I realize like I'm probably oversimplifying yeah. a very complex co- problem, but at the end of the day, I bet it's something like this. You just make hard, hard decisions, more difficult to make, maybe or not hard decisions, bad decisions, hard, difficult to make and good decisions easier for us. Yeah. I just think I, I'm sure that's like a, you know, juve, like a really simple perspective that people have considered uh, before, but I know that like there were many times where I was like, dude, I was so frustrated. I was like, man, this is ridiculous. This is so, this is dumb. And, yeah. and I mentioned that there's like, you know, you can't things like rent. You can't rent anywhere. I've got mm. friends. I've got people. Uh, in fact, I got a, a guy I met on Twitter right now who recently reached out cause he couldn't get a place to rent in Orlando. Sure. And I had to reach out to a friend and he had to reach out to someone who knew someone and was like, Hey, we got somebody who's really cool. Can you please let? He shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, you know it's it's wild. This guy's this guy's trying to learn to code. He's into tech. He's not like we're not talking about like you know, big perm over here. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and like wanting to move into your neighborhoods and ruin it with crack cocaine. Right. That's, 
the mindset some of these people have. It's it's a dude who's just struggling, who has a felony in his past, who didn't make great choices, but now wants to make good ones, and there's friction in the way. That's crazy. I, yeah, I, I think I think there's a there's a there's an analogy here of where children are born into this world and the infrastructure around them is poor or non-existent. And right. so they, they end up making and it, making bad decisions in, in that environment are, are easy because, I mean, a bad decision is simply a matter of not having the most effective information, you know, the best information to properly deal with the situation. Right. Um, and we, they, 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 they make a mistake. They go to prison. We put them in prison for, you know, however long. And then in a lot of ways, they're rebirthed into the world. You know, right. they are almost as clueless of the world that they reenter, especially when you start talking about, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Right. I mean, the world is is it's it's not the same world and they're being reborn, if you will, into a world. And yet they still have poor infrastructure. They still have poor instruction. And yet now they're adults. They have felonies and, and everything on their record. And so the, the, the care and consideration that we somewhat extend to juveniles, is just not there anymore. Right. Um, yep. And they're back in these environments and it's just easy to make a mistake. And, you know, you think about, and you hear it all the time, being institutionalized, you know, they know the culture and the structure of, of, of prison and they know the culture and structure of, of, you know, those environments. And so it's almost easier to just go back and stay. And I, I, I think it's just yeah. a disservice to, it's just a disservice to people. Right. Um, and even, even not just the people, like say, for example, you have a person that doesn't think that we deserve those chances if it's framed in a way so they understood this is better for all of us. Like imagine mm. a world where a lot of the crime doesn't take place because we gave a damn about those people when they were getting out. I think there's a ton of crime that could be client that could be cleaned up because of that. Like if people had a good life and a good opportunity and a good, um, um, uh, could see a path in life that, 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 you know, was with some good choices. I'm not saying it doesn't yeah. require work, but they could see that everybody benefits. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think, I think, you know, obviously there's always, and you know, there's always that person. Well, what about this person? And it's like, you know what, with seven and a half billion people in the world, um, everything that you can think of is actually happening right now. <laughs> right. right? It, it doesn't matter what, what crazy scenario that you concoct It's probably happening right now by the thousands. Um, but, yeah. but, 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 but to your point, when you talk to the person, when you talk to a person, everyone's hopes and dreams are really kind of basic. You know, they want somewhere comfortable and clean to stay. They want to, you know, to be surrounded by by friends and family, and and just to re to have respect and 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 love and a sense of purpose. And these right. things aren't extraordinary. These things aren't groundbreaking, um, but they are elusive if yeah. Yeah. you aren't instructed or or put in a position to, you know, um, productively pursue these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and now like, you're, yeah, go ahead. Gotten into, and like, I, I guess, you know, we would need a whole another episode for this, <laughs> but we, <laughs> like in addressing this stuff, the fact that it's, you know, there's reasons like it's, it's better for all of us. If we prevent crime this way, um, people deserve other chances. We haven't even got into like some of the more like racial aspects of it. Like the mm. fact that for a long time, the people making the laws, this shit didn't affect their community. So, yeah. you know, they were, they were neglectful and they were like, it's, it's, it's like, this isn't, this isn't political. This is shit that we can see that you can read what happened. I mean, it's not that long ago that we had hardcore laws that were targeting, you know, targeted non-white people. And like, yeah. it's just like, like there's that whole argument, like, damn, there's, there's that, yeah. To there's that. The yeah, there's the racial aspect of it. There's the class aspect of it. Again, right. going back to the top, not too many, you know, sons and daughters of, of, of doctors and, and lawyers and senators and, and, and whatnot who find themselves you know, in, in those positions. Right. Um,